Hi everyone. So in this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to Euler's method and Euler's method is a method for solving differential equations and it is a numerical method, which means we can use it to solve differential equations that we can't solve algebraically. Now, for example, um, for example, imagine I, imagine I had a differential equation like this, dy dx equals y squared minus x. I can't separate the variables here. I can't apply any of the other techniques that I have shown you or I'm going to show you. There's nothing I can do except use some kind of numerical method like Euler's method. Now, the example I'm going to show you is actually a more, well, I'm going to show you, I'm going to make two videos. One video to introduce it and show you a simple example. And then in the next video, I'll show you a more complicated example and I'll show you a kind of trick how to, how to do it with the calculator as well. But this example, I'm gonna show you a simple example that we could do, well, that we can easily solve. And I just, cause I wanna show you how it works. So the solution to this dy dx is actually, we know this, this is just y equals x squared over two, and then it's plus c, but they give us the initial condition y equals zero and x equals zero. So it ends up c being zero. So we end up with this is my solution. So look, I don't need to, to use Euler's method because I have the solution. But as I said, I want to, I want to, sh I want to use this, this example to actually show you how it works. Now, this is the solution to this differential equation. And I've actually drawn it. This is the graph of y equals x squared over two. So this is what I am trying to get. Okay, now there's a formula in the formula booklet. I'll get to that uh, in a minute. But first, I just kind of want to explain to you how the whole thing works. Now, this is a little bit complicated to get your head around. But actually, Euler's method is it's, it's actually quite a nice question, because once you get your, once you get the hang of the formula, it's pretty much um, following following the formula and coming up coming up with the answer but it is always good to kind of get a good understanding of what's happening so bear with me you might want to watch this video two or three times just to understand exactly what i'm saying essentially what they do is what euler does is let's say we start here let's say they give us so we need us we need some point to start with so say they give us the point negative four eight now what we do is we get the gradient at this point. Now the gradient of the curve at this point, now imagine, you have to imagine here we don't have the graph and we don't have the solution. Because imagine it's a really complicated differential equation. So we don't have the graph and we don't have the solution, but we do know what the derivative is and we do have a point. So I can find what the gradient is at that point. In our case, it's simple, it's just dy dx equals x. So the gradient is x and at this point it's negative four. So the gradient is negative four. So what it does is, what Euler's method does is, we assume the gradient is negative four, and we make we assume it stays negative four for this step length. So the step length h equals one, and that's I'll get to this in the formula. It says where h is a constant step length. So h is the step length, and the smaller the step length, the more accurate the um, the more accurate the solution is going to be. So let me give you. Let's imagine we use a step length of two. So I'm going to assume the gradient stays. I'm going to assume the gradient stays as negative four. So that's negative four for a step length of two. So that goes from here to here. That's a that's an x step length of two. So I assume the gradient is negative two. Oh, sorry, negative four for that for this length from negative four to two. Now you can see it's clearly not a great approximation. It's good. It's good here. Maybe it's good enough down to here, but it's start. It's starting to go away from the curve. Now at this point, we say, okay, stop. Next step. What's the gradient here? We go to this. It's x. So we sub in. It's just negative two. So now I'm going to assume the gradient is negative two. For a step length of two. Done. Now we've gone way off this curve. Go back to here. What's the what's the gradient at zero? Well, it's zero. So for two, over to here, and now we have. Sorry, not to there. So here I have a gradient of zero for two to here. Now at two I have a gradient of two, and at four I have a gradient of four 
and it's going to go up to here, right? So you can see that is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a great, that is not a great approximation. Now imagine I did it with a step length of one. What happens is it stays four, but only to here because the step length is one. Then it's d then the gradient to this point is negative three, so it's going to be negative three until there. Then it's going to be negative two until here. Then it's going to be negative one here. Then it's going to be zero here. Then it's going to be one there. Then it's going to be two to here. Then it's going to be three. And then it's going to be four. Now note, because the step length was smaller, the approximation was better. Now it's not a perfect approximation, but imagine, and this is actually how your calculator does a lot of its calculations, um, it just goes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So if this gets, um, if my step length is smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, what happens is this gets closer and closer and closer to the actual curve. So that is essentially what Euler's method is doing. Now, how does all this relate to the formula? Well, let's let's try and figure that out. Okay, this is the formula. What we do is we're going to write it out like this, and it's always the same. N N is the number of steps, if you like. So I'm going to start with zero. This is my zero step, my first step, second step, and third step. Now the question says, consider the, differ, uh, the differential equation dy dx equals x with y equals 0 and x equals 0. So it gives me an initial condition here. And it says use Euler's method with step length h equals 1 to find an approximate value of y when x equals 3. So my h is 1, my step length is 1. So I'm going to do, I'm going to have x of n here. The first x x is zero, if you like, is going to be this initial condition here. So this has to be zero. And then the step length, the next one is just whatever the step length is. If the step length is one, it's going to have one, then two, then three. If this step length was 0 0.2, it'll be 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, whatever the case may be. Next one, we have y of n. So my y of n, I'm going to give this more space, and I'll show you why in a second. y of n is the y value. So we're going to use Euler's method to find an approximate value of y when x equals 3. So I want to, what I'm trying to find is the y value here when x is 3. This is what I'm trying to find. But the first y value is 0. That is given. Okay. And then over here, I'm going to write f of x n y n now this you see in the formula here now f this is important f of x n y n is actually equal to dy dx so this is actually the gradient of the function so dy dx is f of x n y n okay now what we do is, let's move that up a little bit. What we do is, we're going to go across. So when n is 0, this is the initial condition. I have my x is 0, y is 0, because that, that was given. And then f of x and y, and this is my dy dx. What is the gradient of the curve at this point? Well, the gradient is just x, so the gradient is 0. If the gradient, if it was like, x minus y squared, you do 0 minus 0 squared, which would also be 0. But obviously, that, that changes depending on the initial condition. And it will change as we go along here. But you got to look at this value. Normally, yes, it's a function of x and y. Again, to repeat myself, I just wanted to give you the kind of most simple example I could think of to, to help explain it. Okay, so 0, 0, fine. So remember, guys, you don't well, you don't have to remember, I'm telling you, you don't have to sketch any of these graphs. I am just drawing the graph to kind of help you explain it. All you need is to draw this. So what we're doing is 
we're assuming that the gradient we're, st we're going to start at zero so he wants to find an approximate for approximation for x equals three so the real value when when uh, x equals 3. The real value is 3 squared, which is 9 over 2, which is 4.5, 9 over 2. And it's here. That's the real value. We want to find an approximation to that. So what he says is he assumes we start at 0, and we assume the gradient is 0 for the step length of 1. Now, how does this um, relate to, the, to, to this formula? So it's like to get to the next the next iteration. So these are iterations. To get to y of n plus 1, the next y, I get the previous y, y of n, so which is 0, oops, I get 0, plus h times the derivative. So it's, it's uh, the step length, which is 1, and it's 1 times the derivative, which is 0, equals zero. So essentially what he's done is he has said, he is saying, okay, we're going to start at zero, we're going to assume the gradient is zero. And we're going to we're going to add this, we're going to add this gradient of zero one time. So it's like this, we're going to go over one, we're going to start at zero, and we're going to go over to one. But because the gradient is zero, we're not moving up at all. If the gradient was two, we'd say we we'll start at zero and we'll go up two times the step length to here, and that would be my new approximation. But we're starting at zero. We're going to go up zero times the step length, which is um, there. Okay. Next. So we keep we keep going on. What x x n is one, y n is zero. What is f of x n y n? Well, again, we have to look at this. This is the derivative. The derivative when x is one is just one. So now we go y y of n plus one. So y of two is y of one. Again, that's zero plus one times because one is our h. This is our step length. One times the derivative, which is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Now again, if you kind of think about what I'm saying here, what I'm talking about here is we are going up. We're going to go up one of these. We're going to go across one and up one. So for, for this step length, we're going to assume the gradient is 1. So that's, that's why we have 0 plus 1 times 1 up to here. Okay, let me go again. What's the gradient at this point? Well, it's two. The gradient here is two. So now we go, we go y of three, which is y of two. So one plus one times one times two, which is three. And again, if I do this, it means I'm assuming that the gradient is two for this um, step length of one, and I get to here. And that is my approximation. So when he says, use Euler's method with step length h equals one to find an approximate value of y when, h when x equals three, it's this, the approximate value of y, of, of y when x equals three is y equals three. And you can just leave it like this, or you can you can just say at the end, approximate value, approx value of y when x equals three is y equals three, and that's it done. Now, as I say, that that was the simplest example I could possibly give you. The truth is. It doesn't actually get a whole lot more complicated than that because you're just subbing in values. Um, but I just wanted to show you one other thing. Imagine if the step length was 0 0.5. Now you can do you can try and do this example if you want. But basically what happens is now instead of instead of going um, instead of going across one every time, I'm going across a half. So you'll know you'll notice you'll get a better approximation. So here x n is zero, 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 that's the same. But now what happens is it starts to get 
closer and closer to the actual, well, it gets closer to the curve than this one. And if we go all the way down here, keep doing the same process, we actually get an approximation of 3.75, which is clearly better than um, the three that we got here. And if you wanted to try it with a step value of, I don't know, 0. Point, what if you did 0. 0.1 or 0. 0.01, you'd need a pretty powerful calculator to do it, you'd probably get an answer very, very, very close to the correct answer of, of uh, 4.5. Another thing to note, final kind of thing to note, when the curve is concave up like this, you'll notice, you can actually see it, what's happening. Because it's concave up and you're kind of following the gradient of the curve like this, the approximation, the approximation that you get will always be less than the actual real value. However, if the curve was concave, concave down like this, you get the the opposite effect happens you get you go like this then like this and the approx the approximation is actually um higher than the real value if that makes sense okay so look i'm well aware that's a that's a tricky that's a tricky concept to get your head around when i do the next lesson um It'll be it'll be more straightforward to just kind of follow exactly what I'm doing. I'll also show you a nice trick on the calculator um, to help you do it um, pretty pretty easily, where you, where you just program in values into into a spreadsheet. P personally, I probably would still recommend you do it the the long way like this, but it's certainly good to know both ways. Okay, that's it. Um, I will see you in in the next video.